today we're going to talk about the NBA playing tournament. Hi, my name is Rotomi and I talk all things basketball. Um, I love basketball and I'm hoping that one day you'll also be able to share that same love for basketball that I have. In this video, I'm going to go through, first of all, what it is. Then I'm also going to look at the pros. I'm going to look at the cons. I'm going to also, you know, bring up some examples of where it's probably gone well and where it hasn't gone too well. Um, and I'm also going to give my own opinion at the end. But I'll be really interested to hear your opinions in the comments down below. Starting with what it is. So in the 2019-20 season, they introduced the playing tournament. For those that aren't aware, the NBA has two seasons, the regular season and the playoff season. In the regular season, there are 82 games. And in those 82 games, that, that's where your team has a record that ranks itself among two conferences, the East and the West, which is a split of America. However, if you look at the map, it's kind of funny. I'll, I'll try and put an overlay up. But yes, so there's a split between the East and the West. Now, what usually happened was your teams would rank in the East and the West, and then come end of the season, you're then seeded into the playoff tournament, which is a best of seven knockout tournament um, in which one play eight, two play seven, three play six, four play five. And that happens on both the East and the West. COVID season came along and there was a huge halt midway through it. So what they decided to do was introduce the playing tournament. So the playing tournament is a preliminary round that gets you into the playoffs before the playoffs begin, of course, preliminary. Um, so how that works is seven play eight and whoever wins out of seven and eight gets the seventh seed. Then, the, so now this new eighth seed is now floating. They have to wait for nine and 10 to play each other and nine and 10, whoever wins out of nine and 10 then gets to play this new ape seed. And whoever loses out of nine and 10 is now out and out of the playoff race. Whoever wins against the newfound ape seed now can guarantee that ape seed spot. If they lose, then ape seed hold their spot. I hope I explained that very well. That's the first thing. I hope I explained that very well. People have their opinions on whether it's been beneficial or negative. I'm gonna go through some of the pros. I mean, mainly for the league, it's increased money and engagement when we think about it. Um, when I looked at, when I was looking up these figures, it, you know, the last four seasons apparently rank among, among the six least viewed seasons in NBA history since the Jordan era, like, you know, going back to 93. And when you think about it, I can tell you now as an NBA fan, this season has probably been one of the most interesting seasons to watch. Looking back at it, there were lots of injuries, people sitting out, and the whole culture of the league has changed where offense is everything, so teams aren't as competitive anymore. So maybe that's been what's drawing back, or is it the technology? Who knows? However, the playing tournament introduces um, six extra games to the season, which are at an extremely competitive level due to the one, you know, the knockout rate. Or, or, you know, the one game knockout rule during playoff season, the competition increases and that competition uh, happens because, again, now it's we're gearing up to championship stage. Players aren't really resting anymore. They're trying to play as much as they can. And so they really put all into it. Teams are studying, staff are studying on multiple things. They're really trying to break down a team. So teams are now playing better defense. And not only that, the comp competitiveness is heightened in the playing tournament because of because it's knockout, which means Steph Curry is going to have an amazing game. Anthony Davis might show up. LeBron James might have a crazy game. John Morant might have a crazy game. Um, Anthony Edwards might have a crazy game. Shea Gilgis Alexander might have a crazy game. Trey Young might have a crazy game. So that's big. That is all because of the one game knockout. Teams know they have a chance and their season could be over if they do not perform. So the superstars really come out to play. Now, four more teams, both two in the East and two in the West, now have an opportunity to really fight for a new position. So now I think teams are more geared and more focused and more, let's say, motivated for the rest of the season to, to you know, really try and at least get to the 10th spot because they know they have a fighting chance. We're seeing there's more fairness for teams. 
Some teams have injuries at the beginning of the season that hinders and throws off their whole regular season. Some teams have injuries at the end of the season that, that hinders and throws off the whole regular season. And so those two extra spots allow for an element of fairness for teams that may have suffered injuries at the beginning or at the end. It now allows for a team to still have a fighting chance. Maybe they're a game out or two games out um, in that playing tournament. And as long as they know that their team's ready and fit and strong, they can now make make a new playoff push as long as they're the better team on the day. You know, for those teams as well, they can strategically prepare. Uh, and when I mean strategically prepare, okay, we can make a huge push to get into the playoffs and, and solidify our seeding to get more rest. Or we can make play in knowing that our team matches up very well against the first seed. Now look at the two examples I'm going to give you. Look, look at the Miami Heat, who were the eighth seed. And we look at the Lakers, who were the seventh seed. They knew that if they were both in the playing tournament, they had a good fighting chance against whoever the first or the second seed was. So in that sense, it probably worked out better than them maybe pushing for the sixth seed. Okay, I get it. I get it. Maybe then the engagement, the money, and the competitiveness, and I guess that element of fairness gives the NBA a reason to include the playing tournament. Looking at the cons, I think one of the biggest cons, and, and I touched on it earlier, and where my, where the playing tournament kind of allows for it, <clears throat> but where the playing tournament falls short is injuries. As a fan, I really want to see my favorite players perform, but I'm so worried that these extra games allow for injury. So two ways the extra games allow for injury. Extra games just simply mean there's there's an off there's more of a, a chance that a player is going to fall weirdly, might have a freakish accident, and, and hurt themselves. That throws them off for the whole playoff sometimes. If not, hinders their whole team's chance to get somewhere. Anthony Edwards had shoulder tightness, which would have, which could have potentially hindered him for the whole playoffs. Anthony Davis, as we know, who is, it's just you know so prone to injury, played in the playing tournament. He could have been extremely injured. That could have thrown him off for the whole playoffs and the Lakers' chances. So when we look at it, you know that's one way that the injuries can affect. And the second way is the fact that there's little turnaround time. I could finish in the playing tournament and two days later, I now I only have 48 hours to prepare for the first seed. I only have 48 hours to prepare for the first seed now, the second seed. And that, in my opinion, is extremely unfair because I have now played, I haven't had a rest. I haven't really had a rest. You know, I mean, okay, I had one day rest and I had to go straight into the playing the best team in the league. Like, personally, I think that's unfair. And again, allows for more injuries. It allows for more injuries to occur because now I'm fatigued. Now my hamstring's fatigued. Now I'm running up and down and now my hamstring's popped. Because guess what? I wasn't allowed that sufficient one more, one extra day rest, two extra day rest. So I think if they are going to make a tweak, that might have to be a tweak that they make. And then there's also the traditional element that people don't like. You know, people believe that once you make the seventh seed, you're in the seventh seed. Once you make the eighth seed, you make the eighth seed. Uh... I hear it. I hear it. You know, I think when we are talking about being competitive in sports, it, you know, where, why are we allowing the losers to win? Why is everyone getting a participa- participation medal? Some coaches in the NBA, their contracts rely on them making the playoffs. If that coach is a terrible coach and they go into the play in, they buy an off chance win. Let's say they play a team that's their three superstars are all injured or their two superstars are all injured. They make it to the plan. Now that terrible coach has another year with my team that I love. Can you imagine that my team that I love and giving and, and, and wasting our season with his terrible coaching. You know? I don't I have not I, I personally think the traditional way is is a great is a great way to go forward. Um but I guess when it when the league are looking at it from their point of view the traditional way doesn't allow for them to make enough money. They've tried it the old way. Let's try it the new way. But then fight back. What's the point of the regular season then? What's the point of the regular season if I know that I can just finish the temp seed? I can like you know I can rest my players. I can chill, and we'll be good. We'll be good. You know, oh, Quinlan doesn't. Quinlan, I you know my little brother. My little brother put this to me. Uh, he's, you know, he's the first part-time NBA player I have ever witnessed. And so this is a good example of how, why the traditional way worked a bit better because you can't afford to miss the regular season. 
you can't afford to miss the regular season because you miss the regular season, then you lose out on a playoff spot. Or for the league, through the league's eyes, now players aren't turning up for the regular season. Now my stars aren't playing. Now, now we're not seeing our Steph Currys. Now we're not seeing our our um, our Giannis's. Now we're not seeing our Jokers. You know, now we're not seeing our Embiid's. And what does that mean? That means decrease in viewership. So they might have to find think of a smarter way. And now they have thought of a smarter way, which is the tournament, in-game tournament. And hopefully I'll get a better explanation of what that is. And I'll explain that in a separate video. Really, when we think about it, the cons being injuries and traditions, you know, the traditional way being the better way. I mean, why are we allowing for losing? Now, what's my opinion on this? Um, I like the competitive element of the playing. I think the playing gets me prepped for the playoffs, full stop. The teams play it right. They can get themselves ready. I think the resting element, as I have mentioned, I don't like it when players take games off, but I am understanding it. You know, I'm looking at a player like Kawhi Leonard at the moment, and I'm extremely worried for his health. Uh, I do think we're looking at an, we're looking at a superstar that probably should just retire because he's getting injured left, right, and center to the point where when we, we're never going to see him play a full regular season or even a seventy, maybe a sixty game regular season ever again, unless he wants to take a reduced role. And I don't think any, uh, you know, I don't think that's something that he would probably want to do. Is, is is he still a contender if he does so? When teams play it right. Again, they can make something of it. Miami Heat as the eighth seed, Lakers as the seventh seed. They positioned themselves well enough. They were, you know, I, you know, I guess Miami kind of did quite well to get get through to Giannis. I mean, get, beat the Bucks and uh, you know get round to the second round of the playoffs after the playing tournament. And the Lakers also did a very good job in beating the Memphis Grizzlies because they knew they matched up well. They knew that they could achieve it, and so maybe working not as hard in the season allowed for them to or put themselves in a more favorable position to win. Um, I think one other positive I definitely see from my perspective is that we get to see the young players really try and push it and perform. You know, Austin Reeves turns up, Anthony Edwards turns up, and, uh, you know, my favorite is Shea Gilgis alexander coming up at the moment. I think, I think that man is so masterful and skillful when it comes to um, playing basketball, uh, you know, when we see, when, when someone almost has every shot in their repertoire and is getting points as the game goes on, it's only just, it's so amazing to watch. And you want to see him in the playoff setting or a, a more competitive setting because now I want to really see him take over games. Um, when I watch his games, I don't see him take over, but I do see him really get his, he's just, a, he's just an efficient, great scorer, to be honest. So it gives him an opportunity to have a, you know, a new stage or platform to practice and prep himself for in the future. Injuries are never nice, and I don't think the playing tournament allows players to rest. Um, that's a huge, that's a huge mistake, in my opinion. If you don't allow for those players to rest, then you are shooting yourself in the foot, foot because you might lose key players in the playoffs because of this new playing tournament that increases the amount of mileage on NBA players already. And so, that being said. I think the playing tournament might need to be revised and things m might need to change. Will that mean we are increasing rest time for players? Maybe now you have to reach a certain threshold to trigger the playing tournament. Is the playing tournament going to look like uh, the smartest move in the book? Is it going to look like a strategical move? That's the question we've got to ask ourselves. I think that more people should kind of be open to this idea of the playing tournament and kind of try and use it to their advantage. I appreciate you tuning into my video. More basketball news coming from me. Please like and subscribe. I will appreciate it very much. And, uh, uh, you know, if you have anything else you want me to talk about, I'll happily talk about it happily.